right, so let's keep going. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop down a null node now. And this is just going to be called the out scatter points, like so. I'm just going to abbreviate that. Cool. Okay, and uh, I'm also going to get rid of the template there for the remesh. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just select all the nodes there and hit Shift O on the keyboard, and that'll create a little net box. Now these net boxes allow you to just kind of bundle these things up, right? It makes it so you can clean up your graphs and you don't end up with these massive graphs, you know, that you can't read anymore. And so um, I like to do this because it splits it out into these little tiny systems, really. Uh, I'm really just concentrating on scattering points here. So I'm just going to call this scatter points again, like so. All right. And with that, we can go and just collapse it. So we can keep working now on getting the cards done. So I'm going to create a line here. Okay, so I want to create a line. And this line is going to be our card uh, backbone. Uh, you can call it whatever you, you, you want. All right, so I'm going to create another line. And this is going to be called our cross section. So our card cross section. Like so. And all we need to do is create a sweep really quickly here. That's just to get things uh, rolling and visualized here for us. Cool. So now we've got our uh, card here. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that our cross section is um, on, on the X direction. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is just put a 1 in there for the X direction, and then what I need to do is make sure that it's centered up so our card isn't off to the side like this. So I'm just going to copy the length parameter and paste it into the origin, and then multiply that by 0.5. All right, and then negate that. It's actually, there we go, get rid of the 0 there. All right, so now our line is sitting appropriately in the center. And that works because uh, we basically took the current length, cut it in half, and then negated it, and that just pushed it off, you know, in the negative direction, half its length. Okay, cool. So now we've got, you know, our card. Um, to turn this into geometry, what I want to do is I want to go and say skin with auto closure. So we hit the little output there, say skin with auto closure. And now we have geometry. And the cool thing about this is we can actually go back to our backbone and change the amount of points that we have on here. And we're going to need that because we want to bend this particular card, all right? Because we're going to create a nice bend fall off using our distance, our density, sorry, our density value. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is get our UVs all set up. And we need these to be procedural, so I'm going to utilize the UV texture node like so. Cool. And the way that we do this is we actually utilize the arc length spline. Okay, so if I were to switch over to my UV view here, you can see that uh, we have this line now sitting at the bottom of our UV view. And now to get to the UV view, you just hit spacebar 5, or you can hit this little uh, drop down here and, um, you know, select the, oops, there we go. We can select the view that we want from here. Okay, so currently we have our backbone all set up appropriately cool and then i want to go and do the same for our uh, card cross section all right so this line right here cool and you can see that we have it down here what we actually need to do is we need to rotate it by negative 90 and that will center it up appropriate appropriately like that cool well we need to do actually one more thing we actually need to get the real size of all this stuff all right, currently this is mapping it to a 0 to 1 value, which is fine, but I actually need the real width of our card cross-section. And to do that, I'm going to utilize the arc length function down here, and I'm going to get the geometry from input 0. Uh, we're going to get primitive 0 there, and we want to go from 0 to 1. What that does is it actually sets it to the proper scale inside of the UV view. All right. So the last thing that we really need to do to get our UVs to uh, show up um, after the sweep node is set this to point. So I'm going to set these guys to point. All right, so we're creating point UVs. And then we need to come back to our sweep and we need to say one primitive at a time. And there we go. So now we have UVs. But unfortunately, they're rotated uh, in the wrong way. So I'm just going to use a UV transform node here, like so. And I'm going to rotate it on the Z, all right, in positive 90. 
And then I need to do a second. So I'm going to call this the rotation here. So then I need to shove it over so it's actually sitting in the 0 to 1 space. So I'm going to do another UV transform, like so. All right. And now we want to move it in the X direction, but I need to know how far to move it. And that length or that distance that we need to move it is the actual width of our card cross-section line. So what we can do is we can take this length here. So I'm going to copy this parameter, and we can just uh, pump it into our relative reference. And there we go. So now... If I were to change the length, you can see that our UVs update appropriately. Cool. So I'm going to hit spacebar 1 on the keyboard, and that takes me back into my perspective view, where I can see my new card. Cool. So what we want to do now is we want to get these guys copied onto all of our points. And so we have all of our points in this scatter points net box here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop down an object merge, because remember, we can use this to grab data from other parts of our network. So I'm going to say get scatter points, like so. And we don't need to transform it, so I'm just going to send, set this to none. And then what I want to do is I want to get the out scatter points. And you can see, if I turn this on, we get all of our points. Awesome. Okay, so all we need to do from here is create a copy to points, all right, really quickly, if we want to just view the results of this here. We'll just pass in the actual card, and we need to do this the other way here. All right. So I just hit Y on the keyboard, and then clicked, left click and drag to cut the network wire. There we go. And voila, you can see that we now have all of our cards copied around, and they're all facing in the appropriate directions. Pretty cool. Very cool stuff. All right, so now that we've got that all set up, one thing I want to do, you can see that, you know, all of our cards um, aren't rendering on one particular side. So I'm going to make these double-sided in the actual geometry itself. So I'm going to do a reverse node. So let's do reverse, like so. Let's reverse this over here like that. And then I'm going to merge the original with that reversed version. And we get the cards with double-sided geometry. Very cool. Okay, so now we've got that. We still have uh, you know, a little bit of stuff to do, but one thing I really want to do is I want to uh, assign a material to these. All right, and this is you know, quite tricky um, inside of Houdini when you're not really sure how all this stuff works, and especially when you start working with HDAs, it's kind of cryptic um, in terms of how to get uh, materials to, assigned to our particular geometry there. And so um, to do this, I'm going to drop down a material node. I'm going to try to do this as comprehensively as possible. All right, so I'm going to drop down a material node. We'll just call this our uh, grass material or grass 001. No, yeah, grass material is fine for now. All right, and we need some way to assign a material to this. All right, so it's looking for material. So where do we do that? So what we need to do, since this is going to become an HDA, we need to make sure that we embed the material inside of the node itself. So to do this, what we need to do is uh, drop down a shop network. Now shop networks contain materials, all right? And this is how we get it so that we can embed it into our HDA. So inside of this shop net, we can double click on this to jump inside. What I need to do is drop down another node called a material network, all right? So I'm going to drop that down. And then inside of this, all right, we're going to drop down a principled uh, shader. And I just need to type that correctly. So principal shader. And there we go. So with this, what I can do is I can set this to, you know, white color like so. And we're going to just turn off the roughness. We don't need any of those particular values currently. Turn off the re reflectivity. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to assign the texture that we exported out from our grass texture sheet node. All right, and that texture is now inside of our Unity project. So what I'm going to do is just go to my home folder, which is your documents folder. And I'm going to go to IndiePixel. And I'm going to go to our project that we created. And this is going to be called Houdini Engine Tips here. We're going to go to Assets, Art, and... What I want is our textures folder. So we want to go on textures, environment, grasses, and we just want to get our texture. 
All right, so this currently is uh, hard coded in, all right, which is fine uh, for now. Uh, we'll get into more, making this more relative when we turn this into an HDA. Okay, so let's go up here. Now we have our material set up, and so I need to assign it now to our material slot here, our parameter. And to do that, all I need to do is go into our shop net here, into our material net, and get our principal shader. Hit accept. We'll take a look at the results here, and voila, we have our grass blade on our particular grass card. Okay, so what I want to do, because you remember in our texture sheet here, we have four different grass blades. I want to basically randomly pick a different grass blade for our card. All right, and so we're going to have to set up uh, a little for loop inside of uh, our node here, so that way we can pick or randomly pick a, a grass blade to put on each one of these particular cards. Okay, so let's close out this video, and in the next, what we'll do is we'll get that all set up. Thanks so much.